I wanted to start athletes on her to change that narrative, to really kind of change the way athletes think and talk about mental health and how they express themselves and to, to amplify stories that aren't being told when it comes to these things. And uh, that's really the birthplace of, you know, athletes on her and, and what we're trying to do is really just amplify um, mental health in, in the athletic community and provide another outlet or safe space for athletes to talk and to um, really express their stories. And to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And today, man, we're, we're, we're diving deep. Today, I, I have, have the pleasure of, of, of bringing a gentleman to the stage who, you know, I've, I've seen out here in these LinkedIn streets. I've seen the amazing work, um, you, know, you know, that he does and just the way that he's serving and supporting uh, not only just our community, but just serving and supporting student athletes and athletes as a whole. So we're, we're gonna get to our guests in just one moment, just one moment. So I gotta, 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 gotta let the, just, just, just let the tension build a little bit. But, uh, but, but, but outside of that really quick, I wanna just underscore and make sure everybody understands the purpose of Beyond the Ball. The purpose of this podcast is to serve and support student athletes by way of sharing stories, strategies and success and and for that reason i, I know it's true essential uh that that i bring on the the, the one and only mr malcolm lemons and, and let me just share a little bit of, about malcolm before i kick the mic over to him he he's, he's a former professional athlete two-time author and the founder of athletes unheard malcolm welcome to beyond the ball brother how you doing today Man, I can't call it, man. That, that introduction was amazing. I'm gonna have to have you do all my intros. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, let me know. I'm I'm good for it, man. Let let, let me know. Let me know. But is, is there anything I, I missed, or or, or, or I want to kick it to you really quick, and just give you opportunity to to let the people just share. Uh, well, to give you opportunity so that you can share a little bit about yourself, uh, just just with the people. Hundred percent, man. I, I I think you really touched on it, man. I, I've been in the space of athlete empowerment and really trying to help athletes uh, succeed on and off the playing field for a number of years. But before that, I was like any other kid growing up in the city, you know, wanting to pursue that dream of becoming a professional athlete. So that's that's really what I chased throughout high school, college. Went through a lot of ups and downs to uh, get to that point. Uh, but I was blessed enough to go overseas and play for a couple of years and struggled with the transition uh, like like many athletes do but really found my calling and and purpose behind uh, giving resources and tools to athletes so just trying to make an impact in, in the best way that I know how and really shed some light on my experiences and, and get back to the next generation coming up yeah man yeah I mean I think I mean I think impacts the name of the game and and, and, and since you said it I'm gonna go ahead and spin off of that because I mean that the, the title of your book is impact beyond the game how student athletes can build influence, monetize their brand and create a legacy. First of all, Malcolm, the title of that book, that's a strong title, man. <laughs> I <laughs> like, appreciate it. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's a strong title and, and, and the book looks good, but, but even outside of that, I mean, just Ma Malcolm, just if you don't mind, just, just talk a little bit about what, what the purpose was of, of creating this book and why was now the time for you to say, you know what, Let, let's go ahead and get into it right now. Let, let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I said before, I've been in this space for a number of years and have seen conversations ramp up about name, image, and likeness and, and uh, really empowering athletes to better utilize the platforms that they have. And as social media technology has evolved for all of us and given us all opportunities, I saw that uh, student athletes were were missing from that from that that opportunity. They were missing out on those opportunities. They weren't really uh, given a chance to capitalize in the way that they should. And so I knew that we were somewhat moving towards a world where that would be the case, where um, the pressure would come down on the NCAA to open those floodgates and to give student athletes the ability to take advantage of their name, image, and likeness, like every other person is allowed to do in this country. And so. Uh, with me just writing, uh, you know, articles and putting out content around this topic, um, I knew that this will be something that will become, uh, you know, a, a big trend and something that will be very transformative, transformative and revolutionary. And so 
the purpose of the book was really to to kind of jumpstart um, that process for athletes and really getting them to understand um, how to capitalize on uh, the influence that they have during their careers. And so it's just a bl blueprint more or less and uh, laying out specific tactics and strategies that athletes can use online and offline uh, to take, a bit, take better advantage. And uh, a lot of it is based off of my personal experience building my brand and some of the mistakes that I made when I was an athlete. So, uh, you know, going back to just trying to make an impact and thinking that, you know, this is the right time for athletes to start preparing for that, that, that um, transformation that they're going to go through next year when name, image, and likeness is in effect. So uh, that, that, that's really what the book is about. And uh, the feedback and response has been really great so far. Dope, man. Super, super dope. What would, I mean, you, you don't have to talk about your, your specific mistakes that you made just in you building your brand as, when you were a student athlete, but, but what would you just say to, to an athlete to just say, stay away from doing these things? If you're looking to build a brand or as you are a brand, because I mean, I'm a firm believer that everyone, if you're a student athlete, if you're a non-athlete, if you're as an individual, I believe everybody is a brand. Um, if they monetize or, you know, create products, that's, you know, that, that all depends on the person. But what would you just say are a few just don'ts? If it's like, do not do this, this will affect your brand. What, what would you tell uh, that, that student athlete or that athlete? Well, that, that list can, can get very exhausted, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of things that people shouldn't be doing, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm a big proponent on the things that go on the offense and really doing the, mm. con controlling the things that you can control when it comes to the way people perceive you and the message that you're putting out into the world. And so when it comes to building a brand, I think that every athlete, no matter what level you are uh, or, or what sports you play, you need to be talking about who you are. You need to be putting content out that reflects the things that you're passionate about, the things that you believe in, the things that you want people in the world to know about you. Because you know it, what, the way the world is moving, no matter who, who you are, what industry you're you're in or you know who you meet with the first thing that people do when they meet you is they google your name mm. and so the, the the information the content that people come across you want it to be um you know authentic to who you are but you want it to be a reflection of everything that you're trying to portray when it comes to your career on whether that's you know during your athletic career or even afterwards so you control that narrative you have to really um, put yourself in a position to where that the stuff that you're putting out is is an authentic and genuine reflection of who you are, and you're you're putting out a message that is going to be beneficial to your career going forward. So every athlete should be creating content and becoming storytellers um, to control that 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 narrative that um, people will have and uh, see about them when whether that's online or offline. Mm, wow. Yeah, I think that's huge, especially with with, with storytelling. Uh, and, and I say that because, I mean, we, we've all, we, we all have our, our favorite Disney movie or, or we all have our favorite commercial or TV show. And if we think about all those things, it boils down really to storytelling. And uh, so I, I think that's truly essential is just getting to a place to where you understand your story and you understand who you truly are. Because I mean, I, I think there's nothing worse than an individual who, if somebody inter is interviewing them after, after a game or something like that, and they're like, hey, you know, tell us a little bit about you. You're like, mm, and then they have nothing, nothing of value to add just to the conversation. Uh, so I, I, I think that's, that's truly pivotal. And as we're talking about stories and as we're talking about storytelling, Malcolm, take us back and, and, and just, just share a little bit about your, your student, student athlete experience and just you, you know, uh, just competing on the court. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll be starting back in high school. You know, I was I was fortunate enough to to go to a highly prestigious um, Catholic school in Washington D.C. called Gonzaga, um, and we probably played in in the most competitive basketball league in the country, um, and and had an opportunity to compete against guys such as Victor Oladipo, Quinn Cook, uh, Jeremy and, and Jerry and Grant, Josh Shelby, uh, played with Tyler Thornton, went to Duke. So a lot of Division one high level. Division one athletes that are that are still you know my friends to this day. These were guys that I competed with in AAU and in, in in high school day in and day out. And so that really exposed me to how competitive basketball was mm -hmm. um, and how much effort I had to put in if I wanted to be on the same level as these guys and ultimately achieve that dream of becoming a professional athlete. And so 
um, you know, that, 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 um, that drive, that level of competition started very early and it really prepared me for college. And so when I, when I, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to receive several division one scholarship offers coming out of high school. And, um, uh, actually I committed to Robert Morris university in Pittsburgh before my senior year. And, uh, a story that I don't tell a lot of people is that I actually decommitted from that school in May of my senior year. So right before I graduated, um, because the coaching staff had left, they the whole mm. coaching staff departed. And that was one of the primary reasons why I wanted to go there. And so opened up my, uh, recruitment. Uh, two weeks after graduation, didn't have a school to go to. Wow. Had a school called Niagara University come out of the blue. They had um, lost one of their scholarship players, so they had a scholarship open. Um, they asked me if I wanted to come take a visit, went up there, uh, and committed by the weekend. So my, my uh, Division One basketball career started at Niagara University and uh, really some of the greatest years that I ever had playing. A lot of those, the guys that I played with throughout those three years, um, I consider them brothers to this day. And um, as I said in the beginning, you know, I went through tremendous ups and downs. I got sick my uh, sophomore year, missed half the season. I had nagging ankle injuries throughout those three years. I would get into it with the coaches about playing time. So it wasn't really uh, the collegiate experience that I thought it would be um, when, when I was coming out of high school. Um, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about, you know, um, how to really just advocate for yourself, how to really push yourself and, and persevere and continue driving for something that you want in life. And so uh, to make a long story short, I ended up transferring, going into my senior year, took a leap of faith, went out to Cal State San Marcos in San Diego, small little NAIA school, and ended up having the best year I ever had playing basketball, was an All-American um, defensive player of the year. And, you know, just really, really just a fortunate uh, situation for me and that's what really afforded me the opportunity to go over play overseas and so I know it's a long-winded answer but um, yeah I, 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 I would say that I definitely had a lot of uh, rocky experiences throughout my student athlete days but the, the biggest thing that I learned was really um, that adversity and obstacles are going to come no matter what you're trying to push for in life but it's all about how you respond and react to those situations that it is a reflection of your character and how much you want something and so I would never let anybody deter me from achieving that dream of becoming a professional athlete, no matter how many injuries, no matter how many times I got into it with the coaches, I always had that focal point and that goal at the forefront. And it really propelled me. And, and, and it's probably the biggest lesson that I take with me today. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, Malcolm, this, this episode is all about you, man. So feel free to keep your long <laughs> stories long. You know, uh, hey, we're, we're, we're not we're not tripping over here. We're, we're definitely not tripping. Man, so you went from... Did you, so you went from the East Coast to the West Coast? I went from the, I, I kept going West. I went from DC to New York, New York to California, California to Japan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kept going West. Wow. And then how, how long did you compete overseas? I was over there for about two years on and off. Wow, wow. So so what was the final straw to where you were like, it, it's, it's just time for you to, to Time for you to, to for you no know, your, your your slacks, I guess. So it's, it's interesting. Um, for me, it was really you know I never wanted to. I wanted to become a professional athlete, but I, it was never something I saw myself doing for like ten plus years. I just wanted to you know travel the world, you know, get to experience you know getting paid to do something I love, and then figure out the rest of my life. The only problem was I had no idea what I really wanted to do. I knew it would be something related to business because uh, growing up, that was the only other thing that I was interested in besides basketball. Um, but I but I had no game plan. I had no guidance when it came to that. And so after my first year uh, playing overseas, I ended up coming back home a little bit early uh, because of just, it was an unstable situation. I came back home and uh, was really trying to get back overseas, but I had to support myself. I had to pay for a trainer. I had to get in the gym. I had to just survive. And so I got, I had to get two, I got two jobs and I hated them. I was working like 16 hour work days, some days just struggling. It was a really um, just hard time in my life because I, I was, it was the first time I was without basketball and, it, and, and I was, you know, working two jobs that I never thought I'd be doing. And 
that was the first time where I, I really sat back and I was like, I don't want to have to ever go through this again. Like, regardless of whether I play another day of basketball, like, this is not what I see for myself. And so um, I, I was was blessed enough to get another job back over in Japan. So I went back over that following season. But I came in the middle of the season. So we had about a month long break where we were practiced for maybe an hour or two a day and we didn't have any games. So I had a lot of time on my hands. In my first couple of weeks out there, I didn't have any Wi-Fi, didn't know the city, obviously, I didn't know my teammates. And I'm sitting in a, in a, a loft about 30 minutes outside of downtown uh, Tokyo. And I'm like, how did I get here? You know, what experiences, what obstacles? Like, that's when I really started to think about my life and how I didn't want to, you know, if this year of playing basketball didn't work out, I didn't want to revert back to what happened the previous year and go back home and do something I, I hated and be miserable. And so I took that time to reflect and really that's what's, that's when I started writing because I had a computer in front of me and time and it was therapeutic uh, more or less. And I, I just kind of poured my, my heart out on paper and really just started to journal and to, to make a long story short, I was sharing that content with other people. Um, people were telling me how inspiring my story was and, and really had suggested I, I write a book. And that was something that I never thought about doing before, but I felt like I'd be doing an injustice to other athletes who were coming behind me who might experience the same things. And I said, if I don't tell my story, if I don't give back, I, I'm doing them an injustice. And so um, I, I published my book that following year and um, actually had a deal to go back overseas to play in Morocco. And it fell through two days before I was supposed to leave. The team basically said they didn't want me anymore. And by that time, my heart was just elsewhere. I had other things in the works. I said, I see a new path for me. And I, I decided to put the ball down a couple of days before Christmas in 2017 and called it quits. Merry Christmas. Goodness. <laughs> That's probably the gift that you did not want that you did not want yeah. to get two days before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. But man, you know, I'm a, I'm a wow. firm believer in everything. Everything happens for a reason, man. So. Yeah, man, for, for sure. For sure. So, so you, you started writing and you said you felt you didn't said that you felt you didn't for the athletes coming behind you. Yeah. Wow. 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 So, so, so talk with me a, li a, a little bit about athletes un unheard and, and, and how this plays a, how this plays a role and how this all connects. So one of the things that I noticed um, growing up is that, you know, coming from the city, inner city, being a, a you know, a child of a, of a single parent and, and watching my mother struggle and, uh, just some of the, the experiences that I had growing up, I never really knew how to deal with my emotions. And it was, was something that it wasn't talked about, uh, especially within, you know, African-American community. Like <laughs> you, you don't show, you don't, you don't show your emotion. You don't talk about your feelings. That's not something that, that was ever uh, expressed to me. And I, as I got older, um, I saw how much that trauma played a, a part in my life and how, because, you know, I'm an adult now and I didn't deal with some of those experiences or feelings when I was younger, when I should have, it's manifested itself in different ways. And I think that that combined with um, everything that we've experienced this year, as far as COVID, social injustice, um, just the high, heightened levels of anxiety and depression um, not only within sports and athletes, but with around the world. Mental health to me um, has has become increasingly important and something that I've grown to be extremely passionate about because of my struggles and because of what I've seen. And I think that, um, you know, sports is really a microcosm of life. And I think that you know, we don't talk about these things in sports and, and there's such a narrative pushed along that athletes have to be tough and they have to, um, you know, never, never show that emotion like I, like I was growing up. And so I want to really, I, I, I wanted to start athletes on her to change that narrative, to really kind of change the way athletes think and talk about mental health and how they express themselves and to, to amplify stories that aren't being told when it comes to these things. And 
uh, that's really the birthplace of, you know, athletes and herd. And, and what we're trying to do is really just amplify um, mental health in, in the athletic community and provide another outlet or safe space for athletes to talk and to um, really express their stories. And, um, you know, going back to just trying to make an impact, trying to make a difference. And I, I think that, you know, the lasting effects from this year will continue to compound going forward, but it's all about how we're dealing with these things. And I think these conversations um, and, and really the platform we're trying to build is going to be um, really impactful for a lot of athletes going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think now more than ever before, I, I think that it, everything's been exposed just, just in regards to mental health, mental wealth, COVID taking place. And just, I mean, as, as we continue just to see um, this and as we just continue to see just the way that our country has been affected as a whole with, with people just day-to-day -day life. So, I mean, I, I, I think just what you're doing and helping you know, sharing your story and helping normalize just the fact of mental health and your passion for it, then I think you'll give other people permission to, you know, sh want to share their story as well. You'll give other people permission to, you know, want to champion for those they may know and may be uh, diagnosed with some sort of mental illness or, or something like that. So, man, I, I definitely appreciate just what you're doing with the platform. I'm definitely going to continue to, to, to follow, you know, your, if I could be a, a resource in, in any way and, and, and supporting that, please let me know. And I appreciate that, man. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so understanding that you're a writer, and like I told, like I told you before, Malcolm Research, I, I watched some interviews on you. I read, I read some things. So, under, understanding you're a writer, man, and 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 I saw that LinkedIn put something out like a few weeks ago, or like a week or so ago, and and you were voted on the top voice. How did it feel when you when you got that? That, that notification when you got that ping, what would what, what, that feel like, man, to know that, you know, all the work and the things that you've been investing and in, putting your thoughts on on paper or on a platform is what, what, what did that feel like? Yeah, man. I mean, obviously, you know, I was I was extremely honored, but, you know, it all goes back to really the value in the community that I try to build around LinkedIn. And I think, you know, especially this year, I've been more consistent on LinkedIn than any other platform uh, because of that engagement, because of the relationships that I've been able to build. So that award uh, and that recognition wouldn't have happened without people giving me feedback or um, you know, reaching out to me or saying that I provided some type of value that has helped them in their careers um, or whatever they're trying to build. So um, extremely grateful, man. It was, it was amazing um, you know, award, but like I said, I, I give all the credit to the people and the community on that platform and, and the tons of relationships that, that I've been able uh, to build through LinkedIn. Yeah, man, Su super dope, super dope. And I, I was going back re reading some of, reading some of the, the blogs that you've put out and I mean, you, you share amazing content and then even the, the thought that you put with it because uh, just me and you being connected, I think for like the past couple of weeks, maybe, or maybe longer than that, but I, I can always appreciate just, you'll share a blog. It might not necessarily be your blog, but you'll share articles and posts but then you will also share your insight paired with it. So, I mean, I always can appreciate that just because it shows like, you know, what somebody else was thinking when they posted it. So now I'm getting to see, you know, what, what Malcolm Lemons was thinking when he, when he decided to share this article or, or that article. But I, I, I want to hear just your, your I want to hear your feedback on where you were in this time. Because I saw one of your blogs that you wrote or one of your articles you shared on LinkedIn and and I believe this was the title, either this is the title or I pulled it from the article. And, it's, and it was, the truth is that I still struggle being a former, former athlete. Yeah, man. <laughs> I would say, I think I wrote that article maybe as recently as last year. It was sometime last year, I believe. And um, it, it, it's the truth. And I, in some aspects, I, I still feel like to this day, I struggle not recognizing myself as an athlete because it was the one thing that I was so committed to for such a long period of time. You, it's hard when you've been doing something for 20 plus years to just suddenly drop it and then go do something else or, or try to figure out, you know, what your identity is, what your purpose or calling is on this planet. And so many athletes struggle with that transition because they've been so invested that what they did has become who they are. And it's why this, this um, 
this notion of separating the two and getting athletes to, you know, going back to capitalizing on their influence and telling that story. Part of that is really understanding what else you're passionate about. So you can incorporate that into your athletic career and that you're not solely focused just on your sport, because that's going to be detrimental when it comes time for you to pivot into something else. And I, you know, going back when, to when I said I know some of the mistakes that I made, that was one of the things that I, I failed to do is that I was so invested in becoming a professional athlete that I didn't have anything else. So, you know, when I was done, luckily I started writing, but even more so I was, I was still trying to figure that out because there's no blueprint to, you know, uh, uh, being an entrepreneur or starting a new career, you just kind of feel your, feel your way through it. And so, uh, the past three years has, has been a lot of trial and error, a lot of figuring it out and um, separating myself from that identity of being an athlete has been a struggle. Um, but I say day by day, uh, it's like, you know, I compare it to, you know, uh, one of the things that I read, I think, from James Clear, who was an author, he talks about in his book, Atomic Habits, he talks about every time you do something, um, and you're consistent with it. It's like you're giving a vote for your identity to become that person. So every time you write, you're a writer. Mm. You're giving yourself permission to be a writer. So it's like consistently doing something over and over to where you're starting to recognize yourself as that thing. And that's what I try to do day in and day out is whether I'm writing or working on my business or whatever I'm trying to build, I'm, I'm trying to be as consistent as possible with that thing to where I'm starting to identify more with it. And it, be, it becomes a part of me and I can kind of shed that athlete title that I, I've been so accustomed to having. And so that's kind of what the premise of that article was. It was me just being transparent about um, how I was feeling um, as a retired athlete and why so many athletes struggle with that identity crisis and trying to get rid of that title that they've had for so many years i mean you just dropped the bar i don't know if you realize that bar that you just dropped <laughs> but man you just dropped the bar golly man i've never even thought about it like that but that makes so much that makes so much sense the more you do something the more you're basically affirming that that level of identity or you're just oh my goodness welcome <laughs> It's real. That's real. <laughs> Man, golly, that's that that's for real. You know what else is real, Malcolm? Your your content is pretty real, man. I because you know I because I followed you today. And and now now we're connected on like all the platforms. But man, I, I was looking at uh, like one of the posts that you put in uh and, and it, it's like a, a, a tweetable, and you said starting a business is easy, building a business isn't. Simple but effective. <laughs> But it's the truth. I'm, I'm unpack, I'm unpack that. Just, just how your own personal journey, and just, just, just talk to me, man. Talk to me, man. No, the past three years, I've probably started more projects than I can count on on my two hands, and it's been a series of trying, failing, trying, failing, pivoting, trying, failing, pivoting, just uh, consistently messing up, and it's like whenever you're trying to build something from the ground up or um, start a business, you, you really have to, it's not a business until you're making money with it, until it's, it's some, some sort of sustainable business model behind it. And a lot of people want to become entrepreneur, entrepreneurs because it's the, it's the hot thing to do nowadays, um, but fail to understand the simple concept of, of product market fit. So providing something that people are actually going to pay for. And so a lot of people start these businesses, but they fail. I think the number one reason why businesses fail is because they don't have any uh, clients or customers. Nobody wants to buy their service or product. So mm. going back to the, to, the, to the tweet, to the post, everybody can start a business. That's the easy part. You know, coming up with a logo, getting a website, uh, you know, posting the product, getting your social profiles, establishing the LLC, like all that part, all that stuff is easy. Building the business, actually getting in the trenches and putting the work in and providing something that people are willing to pay for, it's a different story. And so that's what, the, that's the point that I was trying to get across is that everybody has a business, but who really has a business? Man. 
man golly dang that's really that's really some food for thought because i mean a lot of people running around here with some hobbies but it looks like they got a business but that's not my business you know that that don't, that don't concern me <laughs> which is cool i'm not sitting up here and saying like is anything wrong with having a hobby like we all we all should have passion projects or things we like to do but you you, you can't portray it as as if you like you you're doing six seven figures in revenue and <laughs> ain't nobody buying your stuff like it's it's the perception of the portrayal that i have a problem with you know more so than like somebody just wanting to start something because they love to do it most definitely most definitely i'm, I'm, I'm with you on that I'm, I'm with you on that man my I, I, I truly enjoyed our dialogue today, man. Just, just you, 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 you know, really just shedding light on athletes sharing their story and, and even the fact being vulnerable and being transparent, sharing your story and then creating a platform for us to, to do that as well, man. So, so today, today really has been, today really has been good. Today really has been a treat. I appreciate that. However, man. before I let you go, I, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, but before I let you go, I, I run everybody through it. You you got to go through the two minute drill and um, and people out there listening, this might be your first time. Two minute drill is just where I have a few rapid fire questions. You just answer them. A lot, we allow people to see just a different side of you here. And then, you know, you tell people where to find you. We wrap it up. We put a bow on it. Merry Christmas. And then I let you on, on your way. So So Malcolm, are you ready? Let's do it, my man. Let's go, let's go. Okay, here we, favorite food. Steak. Mm, how, how do you like it cooked? Medium rare. My man, last book you read? Um, Contagious by Jonah Berger. Mm, okay, okay, favorite podcast? Um, Gary V audio experience. I rock with Gary V. Fair enough. Fair enough. Most most underrated cereal. Ooh, that's tough. Honey Nut Cheerios. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then, what's one tip that you wanna you wanna give to a student athlete? You can take your time on this one. Build relationships with people who aren't athletes. You never know who you'll come across who will build the next multi-million dollar company that you should have been friends with. Wow. Oh, I said, who would you like next on Beyond the Ball? Mav Maverick Carter, uh, CEO of Uninterrupted. Mm. Do you, you have a connection? You got a connection there? Man, I, I should. I actually met him at an event, I think, two years ago. But he was he was running around, and I, I took a picture with him, but couldn't chop up with him too long. So I wish I was the plug for you, but might have to go through the back door. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. If I if I get it through the back door, if I get it through the window, hey, I I will reach out. And we'll, we'll we'll see. We'll 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 see, we'll see what we can make happen. We'll see. Man, Malcolm, go ahead. Let everybody know where they can find you, where they can follow you. And, and even with the, of your new book. Absolutely. So I'm on every social media platform at Malcolm Lemons. Pretty easy to find. Uh, my website is malcolmlemons.com. Um, you can check out Athletes Unheard at athletesunheard.com. And you can cop the book Impact Beyond the Game on Amazon. Boom. There it is. There it is. Everybody out there listening, everybody locked in. I want to encourage you all just make sure with Malcolm, send him a DM, let him know something that he shared that really impacted you, that really added value to you. And then after you do that, then share out this episode because I think a lot of people really can benefit from, from a lot that, that Malcolm shared, especially just where our student athletes are now and athletes as a whole, just in regard to mental health and just sharing uh, our story. So Malcolm, one more time, my brother, I just wanna thank you for taking the time out today and, and just hanging out with us. Anytime, my man, I appreciate the opportunity. Most definitely, most definitely. And all the ballers out there, once again, I just want to remind you all, be sure to connect uh, with, with Malcolm, connect with me and, and share out the broadcast. And, and I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.